This is NCC Unplugged. Hey everyone, I want to thank you once again for joining us for another episode of NCC Unplugged. My name is Matt Mastriani and I'm the media and tech director here at the church. And uh, today we're going to be diving into an episode uh, looking at the men's ministry here, which is called The Forge. And uh, before we start talking about that, uh, I want to introduce our guests from The Forge. Uh, we have Rich Seaman, who is a also an elder here at the church. So, Rich, thanks for joining us. Thanks for inviting us, Matt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then we have, known as The View... Nate Stone Cipher. Nate, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, Thank you. Doing Thank you great. Yeah, us. yeah. Thanks. Uh, appreciate you guys agreeing to come on. Sometimes uh, you ask people to come on the podcast and they get a little bit nervous and talking with a microphone shoved in your face. So yeah, yeah. appreciate you asking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I definitely think this is something that um, is really good to talk about uh, for the church at large, not just the men, um, but see how it can impact men's lives. And then hopefully their families and, and you know, beyond. Um, so today, as we talk about the forge, I guess, Rich, you would probably be one of the, the best ones to talk about the origins of the forge, kind of where it came from, how it was birthed, what the name means or where that came from. Yeah, sure. Um, I would say about 10 years ago ish, somewhere in that range. Okay. Yeah. We'd been trying to start men's ministry, you know, I think God's laid it on my heart that I want to do it. Pulling it off is a different thing. You know, we pray for help. But um, I'd say a group of us got together and we said, what should we do? And then at one point in the meeting, we're like, well, we got to have a name. What's a neat name? And we kind of all were like, oh, I think the forge is great because there's all kinds of symbolism there. Sure. You know, in terms of God working on men. And then the obvious verse, Proverbs, mm -hmm. you know, about uh, how iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So that just popped right out. And sure. That was great. So that's the origin of the name, The Forge. And, okay. um, and then, uh, you know, working with Scott Schmidt at the time, the associate okay. minister, we, we put some stuff together and we were trying to, um, you know, do something about once a month. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it, it gets kind of busy and hard. And, you know, we, we weren't real organized. We didn't um, get a bunch of volunteers involved. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of hard to keep it going. Um, but uh, even uh, Neil Laraway used to be involved. I don't know if you knew him, but okay, uh, you know. So, um, you know, we kind of had fun, but it was just kind of difficult to keep it going. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you know we want to make sure that we get multi generational stuff like that. So, you know, basically learning along the way. You know, it's sure. still something that God's placed on my heart. But that's kind of the history, at least that I've been involved. Mm -hmm. in. mm -hmm. You know, we did breakfasts were kind of our big thing at the time, and Doing right. some other activities. Yeah, I think I was involved with a few few of the breakfasts. Yeah. I, I did a devotion. I yeah. got to talk about professional wrestling and church. Yeah. So anytime you can Mix meld two, those yeah. two together, I mean, it, it's a win yeah. in my book. And you made, you made our wonderful logo. Which oh, we yes, love. yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and I remember going back to the origins and the start of it, too. I remember having a meeting um, with a group of guys at a Panera Bread where yeah. we were kind of kicking around the idea. And I think at one point, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but at one point, um, maybe whenever we tried to start it up again, it was it was going to be a group of guys that would be available to help those in need at the church. That was kind of, oh, yeah. is that the right thing that yeah, I'm thinking yeah, of? Or is that too. Different? Yeah, we, we, we did manage to um, put some neat stuff together, I think. We did it kind of ad hoc where we would say, okay, the staff, somebody would come to the staff or they'd find out about a physical need typically for mm -hmm. somebody at the church. And we had a good email list of men who said, hey, yeah, just uh, shoot me an email if I, I'm willing to help and if I can help, we'll do it. So um, I'd say once every month or two, the staff would come to okay. us with a request and send out the email. And yeah, you know, there were a few times I was like, I don't know if we're going to pull this off, mm -hmm. but um, God's very faithful. I mean, every time we were able to help everybody who came to us, which right. was awesome. Yeah. And it was neat to see a group of guys, each with our individual skills yeah. and abilities that God's blessed us with, with the talents. Um, cause yeah, I remember some needs would come through that like I saw and I was like, well, I definitely yeah. can't do that. But then there would be somebody mm -hmm. you know, that would be able to, to help out for sure. Yeah, it was great. We, we, we did a lot of moving, helped mm -hmm. a lot of people move. Yeah. Um, we fixed ceilings, we dug trenches, <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of stuff, you know, just, right. 
It was great. Yeah, that right. that was awesome, and yeah, you know, we still do it. It's just uh, ironically, we haven't had as much need at the sure. moment, but yeah, still out there. Yeah. Too bad we don't get a, a, a request for digging trenches now that Nate's on board. I mean, right. he, he seems like he could be the one to, to just... <laughs> we may after this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to see the request go through the roof for trench digging. So, yeah. Nate, uh, to bring it over to you, kind of how did you get involved? Um, kind of what's your background been like with, with the men's ministry and just Norman in general as well, the church? So I started coming here in 2012. Okay. Um, joining the youth group, it was, and I, and I would come to Sunday service, uh, with my parents sometimes and, uh, but the youth group was my really big, Mm -hmm. I looked forward to it all the time. Um, Ryan Atchison, who is a member here that brought me the first time, he's still one of my best friends in the entire world. So, um, just through the years of doing things with the youth group and making friends and starting to come to service and um, just looking for other ways to kind of be kind of, I don't know if it's an inspiration or if, you know, to help other people Mm -hmm. along like I was helped. Uh, And Rich came to me on Sunday talking about the forge and needing some more help with it and asked if I wanted to join and, help them plan things and get this conference going. And um, I thought that it was just a wonderful thing that they were trying to get kind of a men's group started Mm -hmm. again uh, because I know that um, he had said that the interest and the amount of people they were able to get the past couple years hasn't been, you know, Mm -hmm. exceeding. Right. And um, and so I think we have a really great group. Um, us and, you know, very diverse ages and Mm -hmm. backgrounds. And, um, I think that it's just a very important group to have, um, not to get, you know, too into issues out there or anything, but I think it's really important these days for us to know what a godly man is in today's world, because I think the role of men in, families and society in general is mm. kind of being downplayed a lot. And so I think that it's important to know how to be a godly Christian man. Right. Not right. that you can ever achieve perfection or anything, sure. but you know, we can we can try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It so, gives you something to work for and strive for for sure. Yeah. And, so it seems like men here are receptive to it mm-hmm. so far. Yeah. So we're very excited about that and looking to see where it goes from here. Good. So, good. Yeah, excellent. Really excited. Nate was willing to join us. You know, sure. That was, what I think, one of the downfalls in the past is we never really had that uh, understanding that we needed more guys in the leadership and mm-hmm. to get a good, diverse um, mix in the generations. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, in case people don't know, there's a group of six of us now. We have um, Ed Boone is involved, Rob Newton, Aaron Newton, uh, Patrick Antonucci mm-hmm. and Nate and myself. Right. Um, and we're open to more. So if anybody has a real heart and a passion for it, tell them to come see us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, given that group of what six yeah. six leaders of the forge, I mean, it's spanning the age ranges of early twenties to you know sixties. Too, too much later. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> too much later. To I was We've thinking how gray. I should say that, but yeah, yeah. I yeah. say the young. I say we have young people and wise people. And wi- the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm <laughs> but, sure the wise people would appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And it has been awesome to see what that mix brings to oh, the leadership group to yeah. really help us reach out to people. Right. You know, right. Instead of getting the 53 year old man version of what. I like, mm-hmm. you know, and everything else or how I see the world, Right, we get a really good mix. Yeah. It's, it's also great because I think like, even when we're talking about what we're going to do to announce things like the text video we had this morning, um, like we'll kind of ask each other, like, they'll be like, what, what do kind of like young people mm-hmm. sound like? What do they talk like? Right. Or, you know, if you were coming to this conference, what would you be interested in? Would you want a you know, like a, a wristband yeah, or right. a t-shirt or a hat or, right. and then we can ask them questions about things that we might not be as familiar with. Sure. And so I think it's great that we have 
the group that we do. Mm -hmm. And um, Patrick Antonucci is he's new to the church, mm -hmm. and uh, he joined right after I did, and he's already been. I mean, such a big blessing. Oh, great to us. I mean, just the ideas he brings mm -hmm. and and the enthusiasm. Right is is fantastic. I think he came in the first day and basically kind of came up with our whole our whole slogan. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the short mission, yeah. He yeah. just kind of yeah. he threw something out there, and we're yeah. like, "Oh, that's oh, awesome!" Okay. It was like the down. first thing he said. Yeah. And we're yeah. like, "You just come up with that." He's yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, that's great." <laughs> and 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 then the 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 da moment is like, okay, we're worried about doing this in the leadership. And we're like, this is what men need. Mm -hmm. Right, we need young men that are interacting with older men. Right. All through the spectrum, yeah, you know, and that's yeah. what we want to provide. Exactly. That's, that's part of it. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Um, so we talked specifically about the Forge Men's Group here at Norwin. Um, I want to kind of backtrack a little bit, or I, I know, Rich, we've mm -hmm. talked before. We started recording about some statistics and everything on why it is so important for there to be a men's group, even uh, in church, and. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like the the guys, I don't necessarily know if overlooked is the right word or just assumed that there is no interest from men. And, um, you know, regardless of what church you attend or whatever, it always seems like there's the women's groups, which is awesome. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. they, they need their own thing too. But yeah, the, the men's side of things is, is kind of lacking. So Rich, kind of some of the statistics that you found in, in preparing, yeah. uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing some of that with us. Yeah, they're, eye -opening. they're a bit surprising. Yeah, yeah eye-opening. Yeah. Um, you know, just the statistics now are, you know, they said the average church is 60 plus percent women and 39% okay. men. Mm -hmm. um, and then they said the, you know, the, our culture and the general kind of decline of the church, this is across all, mm -hmm. you know, Protestant, Catholic, et cetera. Um, they said, if you look for churches that are growing, mm -hmm. the, the growing churches in today's culture are much closer to 50, 50% men and women. And it's, you know, so, yeah, you can argue scripturally and everything else, but right. it's like, hey, if you look at churches that are growing, there's a lot more men there, mm -hmm. you know. And, right. and then when you, you you know you pray about it, you look at it, you're like, okay, I can understand why. Yeah, you know, the, the, if you're truly seeking a godly man, um, you know, they're leading your church, mm -hmm. they're drawing in other men, other families, um, and then like a quote here from David Morrow, uh, he writes some other things that. Maybe a little rougher, but, you know, he says, if you transform men, you transform the family, the community, and the society. Draw men to church, and you often get the family in the bargain. And yeah. There's a whole lot out there, statistics of, you know, when dad attends the church, how to, how much the children attend. Yep. Um, and then you can even find some on, you know, what percentage of children continue to attend church once mm -hmm. they grow out of the household and and those kind of things. So it's... it's um, scary yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but the, the positive thing is 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 awesome it's like okay that's the impetus why we want to have a thriving men's group mm -hmm. right i mean we want god to be praised we want men to come to god mm -hmm. and it 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 seems to be you know one of the bigger factors in creating a vibrant community yeah sure no um but, yeah and in, in preparation too we were looking and this isn't to pat ourselves on the back or anything but this is just strictly numbers you know he said it churches that are closer to 50, 50 men and women. Um, I was doing some investigating on our numbers and we're right around, what did I say? 55% 55. 55 and right. 45%. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you, <laughs> this Sunday, especially like you take a look at our church, like new people coming, growing, we're running out of room. We're starting a third service. Like, you know, it's mm -hmm. um, active, uh, leadership in different groups um, is just, it's its very encouraging to see. Um, and I think too, for men, uh, for the longest time as well, we're, we're just kind of meant to, or expected to just like, you know, go to work, take care of your family and that's it. And not, not necessarily address like the issues that guys deal with on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis. And, and that can feel isolating and everything. Um, and just knowing that there's other guys out there going through the same thing across a wide age range um, can be encouraging and just, you know, building each other up and everything as well. Yeah, and I, th I think today's culture, 
kind of just leaves the man behind. Yeah. It's a sad part, you know. It's like, sure, men men have had issues, and just like everybody else. And yeah, men absolutely. can do better and everything else, but mm-hmm. our culture tends to have just kind of thrown them out, mm-hmm. you know, as, as opposed to let's improve it. Right. You know, and, right. and that's where we want to get. We're like, we want to make ourselves godly men, men mm-hmm. that God wants, yeah. that our culture should see, should have no problem with. Right. And see that, yeah, these are these are good people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and, and not to go down this whole rabbit trail, but you know, you you look in the media and everything too. You know, back in the in the olden days, you know, the the TV shows that were out there and everything, and the men in these TV shows were rough, rugged, like ma- what you would call manly, manly man, men. You yeah. know, and in the fathers, you know, the old shows like Leave It to Beaver and mm-hmm. so, and they were like they were respected. Andy Griffiths, uh, you know, I, I enjoy watching that. Respected dads and guys in the community that people would go to, um, but then as you go through the years, you know, they're, they're, they're doofless, you know, mm-hmm. guys that don't do anything right, can't lead their family. And, uh, so yeah, it's, it's just kind of discouraging to see that. And hopefully with, with the forge here locally at Norwin, you know, we can kind of start changing that tide for sure. So, yeah, I was, yeah, I was kind of, I was born in 97. Okay. So, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, I was catching like the, the tail end of watching things like, and I, I don't know why, but the first show that comes to mind is Family Matters with okay. uh, yep. like Steve Urkel. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was like, I feel like a manly man should be like Carl Winslow. Okay. Basically. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. cause like those were just the ones that like, you're kind of like drawn to as like a father figure mm-hmm. or doc or uh, not doctor, uncle Phil yes. from uh, yeah. fresh, Prince. fresh Prince. Yes. Yeah. Like the ones that were kind of tough, but loving right. and kind of were able to lead their family and, mm-hmm. and kind of do what needed to be done in a, you know, a godly kind mm-hmm. of manner. Yeah. And, um, but I see your point definitely. Like as like I was a kid and new shows were coming out on, you know, Disney or Nickelodeon mm-hmm. or whatever, the dads could be like kind of just always messing up yeah. or or and stuff like that. So that yeah, that definitely is something to think about because it kind of creates it gives society an idea of how to picture yeah kind of yeah. men and dads right. and things like that yeah and not to go on a deep dive on tv <clears throat> shows but the one that like really stuck out to me and i loved the show i watched it all the time was home improvement mm. with tim allen yeah. like super funny guy it was a super yeah. funny show and stuff but like everything he did as a dad or like in his work life he was messing up left and right yeah and i remember i was born in 82 so i'm a little bit older <laughs> than you but like i remember thinking back then even not realizing what I was thinking about and how they were portraying dads, you know, I was like, that's, you know, I don't necessarily know if that's right or yeah. how they should be portraying dads. Yeah. And it, it's tough because yeah. it's fun, right? right. It's fun. Right. But then when you say, okay, that's just what all men are like, you've taken it too far. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the flip side, not to make it too serious, but it's mm-hmm. like when you take men that have no God in their life mm-hmm. and you give them power, you yeah. get all kinds of bad stuff, right? right? And I think that's what our world's reacting to mm-hmm. is, you know, men behaving poorly in in places of power when they have no godly influence. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, so our world has seen that and been stung by it. And so they're rejecting everything. Right. And, and I think that's one of our goals is trying to create the men's ministry is to show, no, uh, a man who's influenced by God and following him, living and loving as Jesus did, mm-hmm. like we were told to, is something that's appealing to people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. And something that's attainable. Like you yeah. said before, never going to get perfect at it. No. But yeah. It's hard. It's yeah. hard for oh. everybody to live. It's hard for, yeah. to be a man in this world yeah. and everything else. But, yeah. you know, we want to do it together and, mm-hmm. you know, God can help us grow and improve. Right. Right. Exactly. So, so kind of you brought it up a few times. You, you've mentioned it, the, the men's conference that we have coming up. Nate, if you want to talk a little bit about that, what it is, what the idea or thought behind it was, and just how it got started and what we have to look forward to. Yeah. So um, it's called the Better Man Conference, and okay. it's going to be Saturday, October 5th. Um, we're going to have a free breakfast for men at 730, and uh, registration is going to be at 8 20 in for case people who want to sleep in yeah <laughs> yeah or can't make it to breakfast or whatever but again the breakfast is free so I'm, i'll be there 
Is uh, but, is Jean preparing the breakfast? Yes, she, she, we signed her up. Okay, right away. Yeah. so if you're listening and you're not sure if you want to come, the fact that Miss Jean Hook is going to yeah. be preparing the breakfast and her team of ladies and so her awesome. team, yeah, yeah, show up just for that <laughs> even. <laughs> but go ahead. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have. There's gonna be some worship music uh, from Jonathan. And a couple other people. I don't think we're going to have a, a full band or anything. Mm-hmm. It's going to be kind of stripped back a little bit. Um, Jeff and Joshua and uh, Garrett. Jonathan. Or, I'm sorry, what Jeff it? and Jonathan and, and Garrett. Garrett. Yeah, we got Joshua in our pocket for next time. Oh, okay. yes, yes. All right, yeah. So those three are going to um, they're gonna speak for mm-hmm. us. Um, and, and just real quick, too. Uh, Jeff is our the our main preaching minister here at the church. Um, Jonathan is the youth minister. Yes. And then did you say Garrett yeah, as well? Yeah. So Garrett is our outreach uh, minister, missions minister. Is that yeah. outreach? Outreach and, and uh, small, small groups. groups. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, minister. So, so those three from the church are going to be speaking. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just think it's going to be great. And we're going to break into some small groups as well. Mm hmm. Um, that we have some volunteers for that are going to help lead those. And uh, I think I'm most excited about those because I've always I've always gotten the most out of small groups and talking to other men mm-hmm. and kind of just answering the same questions uh, and how we can all see things in kind of a different way and actually have a discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I think we're hoping to wrap it up at about 12 so it won't be it won't be you know all of saturday or anything but sure. i think i think it'll start your day off yeah. pretty great yeah and i think we want the focus to you know better man this is our first one what we're talking about it's like how do we be a better man mm-hmm. right and it's so you know jonathan's going to talk about what culture today says a man is and we've asked garrett to talk about what does god say a man is and then jeff's lined up to talk about now what do you do about it okay and and of course sing yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna sing uh, arms, ar- arms wide open by yeah. Creed. So I think yeah. that was a different minister though. Yeah. So. That's why we, you know, need to breathe. His yes. thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we can we'll get. I don't know. Maybe if we get fifty signups, we can get Terry to come and uh, maybe yeah. sing arms wide open. Yeah, but. He might do it with no people here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You may. I, I could see that happening. Yeah. But yeah, we'll have a good time. We got Aaron lined up to do a little bit of fun and games. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. I just think it's gonna be a. A wonderful Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Great way to kick off your weekend with some other Christian men. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing that I get out of those things a lot, too, is uh, we did a hike about a month or two ago. And there were so many men in the church that I had never even met personally. Like I'd seen around, but, you know, you have two services Mm -hmm. and it's we have a lot of people. So you don't always get to meet everybody, but... Now there's a lot more people that I can say hello to when mm-hmm. I come in and, you know, start conversations with. And so I think that these events make that, you know, a possibility. Yeah. I mean, you come and meet somebody and they could end up being one of your best friends. And the more Christian friends you have, the better. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've learned that over the years for right. sure. Yeah. yeah. And I know, like, me and you personally, like... We're relatively new to being introduced to each other and everything, yeah. and uh, you know it's because of the forge that we got to to yeah. start to know each other as well. So yeah, yeah it's looking been great. forward to Absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's great. I've been still meeting new people too. Yeah, you know, and it, the the you know a group of leadership's been fun. Great mm-hmm. people. Good. Great guys, and the, you know the hike's great. Right. And and I, I know we didn't say it this morning, but you know we're we're reaching da- out to you know high school men too. Sure. Yeah, we've we've kind of said fourteen plus because it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you're dealing with this as a guy from the time you're in middle school, right? Yeah. Right? So, yeah, yeah. And that's when a lot of the, I think that age too is when a lot of uh, worldly temptations yeah. start to come in, start yeah. to come in, yeah. and that's a very important age where you're trying to discover who you are as mm-hmm. a person, um, and you know, me personally, just saying. That was a great time to have where you need leadership Mm -hmm. and you need Christian leadership because, you know, some people, unfortunately, some kids don't have, you know, a dad or 
anything like that that could either one be not there at all or two is not a good example mm -hmm. of that and so uh, i was fortunate enough to i have two parents that are are fantastic but i've had quite a few people and men in this church specifically that have in ways become kind of like second fathers that I can run things by and, right. you know, have had long talks and gotten a lot of advice. And so, um, that, that age group is crucial mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And I just, I just picture in my mind, you know, you've got young high school guy sitting in a group with Frank Coates. Yeah. Talking. Right. You know, just, just yeah. that experience, yeah. you know, the that, wisdom and yeah, yeah, you know, all across the spectrum would be yeah. awesome, you know, and that's, that's what we want to see. What's what we want to grow. Yeah. I know we're just getting started. So right. yeah, we'll, we'll see where God takes it in yep. the future and what we can do with it and everything. So, so if you're listening and maybe Rich and Nate, you can speak to this too. Um, you know, we, we announced it this morning and I, I personally had conversations with a few guys that were just like in your, the text video we did like, eh, I'm not really, you know, not really sure if I'm cut out for that or it's not really my thing. What would be your, you know, in the business world, your elevator pitch to, to somebody to to make sure they want to go? We know there's going to be free breakfast from yeah. Jean Hook and her crew. So that, that's going to be great. But on on a more serious level, like what what would your words of encouragement be for them? Well, uh, I would say that there's really, you know, it, it doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. There's no you know, pressure to, to speak in front of anybody or anything like that. This is very much trying to introduce people to mm -hmm. each other and what a Christian man should be. And, um, basically just have conversations, you know, nobody's speaking at anybody mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, and there are, there's a lot of new people, I think, that that are going to be coming. And so you certainly will not be alone. Right. And, you know, these are some of the nicest people in the world that have signed up to come already. So um, I just think that if it was something that you can come to and you decide not to, I think it's something that would be kind of a big regret. Yeah, yeah it's it's not threatening. You know, I know it's it's tough because even me as a man, it's like somebody goes, "Hey, let's let's get together and we're gonna share our feelings and talk about what you know." And right, it's like, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like no. Yep. I mean, even even where I'm at, you know, I feel like I'm much more open to that kind of stuff. But that's, you know, and that's not what we're gonna do. We're sure. not gonna, you know, it's it's not gonna be threatening or anything else. But it's like we all feel like, hey, I can I can do better. Mm -hmm. You know, and even you know, little steps, big steps, whatever, right. and. The you know overcoming the I have to do this by myself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you know I think we're going to see that you know, we share a lot in common. Yeah. yeah, all our struggles and you know a lot of it, like we were saying before, is kind of like a church service. Like mm -hmm. we're going to have worship music, and we're going to have those three you know wonderful speakers, and it's just kind of catered to this group though yeah. of men yeah. Yeah. and how to be a, a godly man in today's world. Mm -hmm. So. The only talking that really would happen is in the small groups, and I think that that's where everybody usually kind of likes to say something. Or yeah. you know, if you don't, you at fine. least you at least can you don't have to say anything, mm -hmm. and you can you know just think about what other people have brought up that might get you to think about something in a different way. Mm -hmm. But I think that that makes it kind of less threatening. Is it kind of like is a service just kind of like catered to? men right yeah. you know and things that we as men need to hear and think about yeah, yeah. and i think this is an opportunity too for men to let us know mm -hmm. right um what what is church to them mm -hmm. you know like i think part of the problem just in general i don't necessarily think it's here but a lot of men are like oh church that's that's for the women and the kids mm -hmm. and everything else and right. it's a little bit of a failure on the church's part mm -hmm. you know it's like what is a church to to a man what do you expect? Mm -hmm. You know, we'll we'll probably have a survey like, hey, what'd you get out of this? What would you like to see? What do you really want to talk about? Yeah. So it's an opportunity also to for them to give input to us. Oh yeah. Yeah, because they want to see. It's a, you know, it's our first one. Yeah. So 
uh, we, that's definitely something afterwards we're going to ask, you know, is there anything more that you would have liked or mm -hmm. what would have helped you enjoy this experience a little more, if anything, mm -hmm. you want to see more of this, less of this, you know, something that we might not even have thought of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. then for the next time that we want to do it, we'll have that kind of ready. Yeah. So. It yeah, and then all the other things we're doing, the activities and everything else as well, there's an opportunity to to ease into it sure. a little easier too. It's like, you know, we're we're still gonna talk about God and mm -hmm. and how you know we can be better at these activities, but you know, we go hiking, we're gonna go biking, we we're gonna try to get curling and you nice. know yes. so it's it's go have yes. fun with other <laughs> yeah, men. Right. You know, I know in my life I've gotten the closest to other guys, not by sitting on a couch like we are, uh -huh. but, but we're go doing something. Yeah. We're off doing Absolutely. something together. Guys I went and played softball with. And yeah. that, you know, you can talk when you're not staring at yeah. each other. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. That's, you know, we want to create that. Yeah. I know today for me, like after church, a group of us went and played disc golf. Yeah. We got rained on. We had fun. We were running around like little kids in the rain, like trying to hide under trees. It just, yeah. just the, the bond, the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we weren't necessarily talking about God things all the time while yeah. we were there, but just being there for one another and, you know, getting to be better friends with each other and just being around other guys. We brought our kids with us, you know, so it's, it's kind of neat to, yeah. to interact and, and, and see it, that. It builds up your faith. Even if you're not, yeah. you don't have to be speaking about God all the time, right. you know, every second that you're together, but knowing that you're with those like-minded people mm -hmm. and you're all after the same goal and you're trying to do the same things, yeah is just that spending a couple hours hanging out like you would with any other friends but with those friends mm -hmm. is i feel like i always get a lot more out of that yeah yeah and i know for me when i'm hanging out with guys from church that we all have that common bond and that unity of of god i can almost relax more because i i know we have that common interest and i know you know, for the most part, how the conversation is going to go. And we can just like be ourselves in front of each other um, and hopefully inspire one another. And, and again, just, yeah, just hang out and, and get that yeah. good friend group that um, every guy needs too. like, we can't do this alone in this world, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, and I think maybe sometimes there's hesitation because it's like, well, I'll be around all those church guys. I won't be able to be myself, you know, if they knew who I was, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the... That's the thing we want to we want to get rid of. You know? Yeah, it's like yeah. we want this to be a place where you can be yourself. Right. You know, you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we'll all work on it together. Yeah. Not one person here is. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Said I, I forget the exact quote, but it was something like, "I don't go to church because I am perfect. I go because I'm not perfect." Yeah. And you know, we don't we don't need Jesus in our lives because we're perfect. Because yeah. if we were, we wouldn't need Jesus. But you know, we need Jesus in our lives to feel that gap where we are not perfect, no matter how hard we, we try to obtain that. We never will, like we've talked about several times. But yeah, Amen. yeah and just building each each other up and being that iron to sharpen each other yeah. as well. Yeah, that one the one perfect man we all killed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> think think that's yeah. Think about that. Yeah. yeah. Like in the in the history of things, think about that for a yeah. second. That's I've never, I've never like heard that before. That's, that's deep. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And that you, hear, you can come to the better man conference after yeah. hearing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. yeah. The one perfect man there was we killed. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, tough. Wow. But yeah. I, I mean, it's so far, it's been a great ride, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I, you know, I was away and we struggled to, you know, kind of never really got it off the ground before, but you right. know, now it's kind of fun to say we're going to relight the forge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. You know, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There might even be weapons at the, oh my, you know, forge weapons. You never know. Yeah, okay. we talked about, we are yeah. working on an anvil. Oh, very nice. We'll keep that, as, nice. we'll okay. keep that as a teaser right. for now. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Next thing you know, it'll be NCC forged in fire. We'll have our own <laughs> yeah. competition where we build our own knives and swords yeah. and everything. We had the meeting. I said, they sell like real cheap machetes at Walmart. <laughs> I said, everybody that comes, you you know, get a free machete yeah. Yeah. on the way out. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. You're but yeah, there's just so much... Um, analogy and metaphor mm -hmm. to the forge that it's like it's just begging for a lesson i'm sure somebody's yeah. done something out there we can find but sure you know, we could even do a small group with it sometime, yeah you know, yeah whatever, absolutely but, no that's great yeah. so um in, in closing as we wrap up i want to thank you both rich and nate for joining thank us you. today on ncc unplugged 
Uh, we do have a page on our website for yeah. the forge. It's under the connect tab. Um, and just go on norwinchristianchurch.com, hit connect, and then hit the forge uh, button. It has a list of information, just general information about the forge, who we are, what our goal is, why we exist. Um, and then it also has the information on the Better Man Conference that's coming on, up on October 5th and a way to sign up and register for that. Um, and then if you also get the emails through the church, there's sign up links through those as well. Um, so definitely opportunities and chances out there, uh, for sure. And we want to, uh, we want to see if we can pack the house a little bit for the yeah. first ever, uh, forge conference for yeah. a Northern Christian church. We yeah. want to see you, whoever's listening. <laughs> yes. We yeah. want to see you. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. Tell, and, and tell your husband, your son, your nephew, your uncle, yeah. anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come one, come all. Yeah. And the, you know, the one last statistic is. Yeah. Less than 10% of churches out there are able to maintain a vibrant men's ministry. Mm. So come make ours a success. Yeah. yeah. Come make, you know, we right. want God to make it a success. Yeah. Come be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. can't do it without you. Yeah. It's free breakfast. Free, free breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Way to wrap it up. Yeah. So, yeah. No, again, I want to thank you both for joining us Thanks on NCC Thank you very Unplug. much. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It was a great conversation. Uh, looking to yeah. see, looking forward to seeing what God can do uh, with the men here at Norman Christian Church. And hopefully we can take what we learn and apply it to our lives that then we can go out and uh, help others apply it to their lives and, and be that, you know, good role model or a good friend um, that everybody needs right now, especially in this world. So I want to thank you all for uh, once again, listening to NCC Unplugged. You can like us and uh, follow us on Spotify and Podbean and iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere you listen to a podcast, just search for NCC Unplugged. Uh, you can check out our website, norwinchristianchurch.com for all the information of our upcoming services. We do have a very exciting Thursday service that's going to be starting on September 5th at seven o'clock. Uh, that's going to be very similar to what our Sunday services are as well. So it's a third service uh, during the week to maybe help you get recharged and uh, energized and be able to have God in your life once again. And I, again, I want to thank you for joining us and thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning into NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family. If you are interested in learning more about Norwin Christian Church, visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com. We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services. Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. and Thursdays starting September 5th at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.